Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the We Cafe webinar. It's titled Ask Me Anything, Government Bidding Explained for a Business in the Service Industry. So my name is Danielle Andrews, and I will be the facilitator today. My role at WBC is the Outreach Officer, and I'm joining you today on the unceded territory of the Silks Okanagan people. And I invite you to share whose traditional territories you are joining us from. Um, my colleague Netta will post in the chat a really helpful link that will help you identify uh, what unceded territory or what traditional territory you are on. And we are always looking to develop the topics that we cover. So please uh, reach out to us, Netta or myself, if you have a topic of a future webinar that you'd like us to cover. We will also have a follow-up survey at the end of today's session, so you can share with us what those topics are. And we are very fortunate today to have some American Sign Language interpretation. Thank you so much for being here and, and making this session accessible. We also have closed captioning provided today. Um, and if there is specific instructions for viewing the closed captioning, um, my colleague Netta will be sharing that in the chat. If you have any challenges accessing that uh, resource, please uh, send her a message in the chat and make sure that you can get that resource. So I'm going to share a bit about what we offer as an organization. So WBC offers financing to get business started and operating capital to fuel business growth. We offer more flexibility than traditional lenders because we take a holistic approach to provide loans based on your business viability, and we don't base this on formulas. This is because we provide loans to a diverse range of women-owned businesses and support you through an integrated service delivery process. And we provide complimentary training, mentoring, and business advising. From essential business skills development to personalized business advice, we know the right questions to ask and the right resources to connect you with. In our mentoring programs, you can connect with a wonderful network of women entrepreneurs and experts around BC that can support you and inspire you. And you can learn about our services at our shiny brand new website, which is we-bc.ca. And you can sign up for our e-blast and get notified of new programs. And we've got a ton of great offerings coming up this winter and into spring. So now on to today's webinar. So if you're in the room today, um, I'm wondering if you are a small business owner in this service industry and are interested in bidding on government contracts. The Government of Canada is one of the largest purchasers of services in Canada, and their needs are often diverse, and they may surprise you. And even if you're a very small business, even a micro business, they may be looking for a service that you offer. So today, uh, we are lucky to have three panelists um, here today, and I will give them formal introductions in a moment. They are going to cover how the government bidding process works, how to find opportunities and practice bidding, and they will also explain the types of opportunities available. And in our pre-call, they let us know that they're really hoping this session is interactive. So uh, please um, put your questions in the chat and, and let's make this as interactive as possible. So it's my pleasure to introduce our panelists. I'm going to start with Carolyn Author. Carolyn is a Senior Inclusive Business Advisor with Procurement Assistance Canada. And for those of you who don't know, Procurement Assistance Canada recently went through a rebrand. So you may know OSME, um, it is the same organization. So Carolyn enjoys educating and empowering clients and suppliers in the buying process. She is a committed partner in the development of procurement solutions that assist 
in socioeconomic gaps and eliminate, eliminating systemic barriers facing First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people, Black business owners, and other equity-seeking groups in the Canadian business community. Carolyn comes to PAC with eight years of experience as a buyer for the government of Canada. And I think that's an important thing to note is that Carolyn has actually been the person buying on behalf of the government of Canada. So she's got that real experience um, working with businesses and, and getting them those contracts. Carolyn is a leader in federal black employment employee caucus and diversity networks. And she is also a leader in the federal black employee caucus in the BC chapter. So a warm welcome to Carolyn. We also have Alexander Amesh. He has over five years of experience working with federal government and he currently works as a policy analyst with PAC where he has helped potential suppliers navigate federal procurement processes. And he has developed a tool to find new opportunities and understand more about federal government support. Alexander holds a bachelor's of science in political science, and he has a master's degree in global security. So welcome, Alexander. And finally, we have Carter Bobby. Carter has been working with the federal government for a year, beginning with the Office of Procurement Ombudsman, which is a neutral and independent organization of the government of Canada that helps resolve the contracting disputes between business and federal government. We've actually had uh, presenters from that office here on uh, previous webinars, if you're interested in learning about that. He is uh, directly addressing the front end of procurement help services where PAC represents the views of smaller businesses and encourages their participation in government procurement. And Carter also holds a bachelor's of science, um, bachelor's of science in political science. And he's got a master's of global business. So, we are just so thrilled to have these three experienced presenters here today. And so now I'm going to turn the floor over to them. They will take it away with their presentation. And uh, thank you everyone for your attention and your interaction in today's session. Great, well, I think that uh, means I'm up. Um, thank you for the great introduction, Danielle. Um, everyone, my name is Carolyn Arthur. I work with Procurement Assistance Canada. And today I'm speaking to you from the uh, traditional territories of the New Chalmers people. Um, so right now I'm somewhere south of Tofino. Um, but my home is in Vancouver, uh, which is Musqueam, Squamish and tsleil uh territory. So that's a silver lining in this pandemic era is uh, we can be working from from different locations. Um, so just a little bit more about me. One of uh, the things that I like to focus on is is doing this kind of work with understanding the possibilities that there's more inclusive ways uh, of doing business with the federal government uh, and, you know, doing the buying and selling uh, within that context. So that's another reason why I'm really happy to be here today speaking with you uh, through the support of uh, we BC. Um, so the session today, um, we're going to start off with a little bit of a slideshow, giving a, an overview of uh, the doing business with the government of Canada. Uh, and then we'll kind of slide into that Q&A uh, cafe salon aspect where we can answer your specific uh, questions. So, <clears throat> so uh, we can move on to slide two and I'll get right into it. So this uh, slide here, this is Procurement Assistance Canada, tells you kind of what our office is all about and what we're here for. So we are here to help small businesses um, and diverse businesses navigate their way through the federal procurement process. Um, and when I say procurement, what I'm saying is buying that 
we have the term procurement, but it really means our process for buying the goods and services that keep the government operating and help to um, serve the mandate, whatever that may be, year over year over year. Um, now, another aspect of our office is we work to understand what stops buyers from submitting bids or doing work with the government. Um, we also kind of take that information and we work with policymakers within the government to kind of bring forward the concerns of smaller businesses and get to suggest ways to make those tools and processes easier for small businesses to uh, navigate. Now we're gonna, that's the overview. I'm gonna dive in and uh, just talk a little bit more about the, the details here. So as Danielle mentioned in the introduction, the government of Canada spends billions of dollars uh, by awarding hundreds of thousands of contracts every year. Um, and as well, we make well over a million direct credit card purchases. So what the, that represents a huge potential market to all kinds of businesses. <clears throat> if you could go to slide three, please. So on the slide there, $23 billion, um, and that number has been pretty steady um, over the last few years. Now, we do also want to understand why more smaller Canadian companies aren't taking advantage of all of these opportunities. Um, so that's one of the parts of my job is I get to encourage the uh, small business community to, to come on over to our side and, and get involved and, and figure out uh, what's going on here. Uh, if we can move to the next slide. So there is a myth um, out there that the government doesn't buy from smaller businesses. And I'm gonna tell you that that is not the case. Um, so about 90% of the contracts awarded are valued under $25,000. Um, and that work, it may, it may be of a low complexity or just a short time frame or fitting a smaller need. Um, but the one thing is when it's under $25,000, it can be a very informal process to be one of the suppliers that's included in um, those types of contracts. Now, another number to be aware of is contracts valued under $10,000 um, and as well under $5,000. That's a, a number you're going to hear of a lot. The opportunity there is those are quick, easy, um, what we call sole source transactions. And those under 10,000 can be done via credit card. Um, so there is, you don't have this need to go through that complicated and formalized process um, of government buying. So we're gonna try to assist you in, in figuring out how to, how to get uh, those types of opportunities. If you can go to the next slide, please. So here's another myth, myth as well, is I'm too small. Um, so it's never I'm too small. So our office um, works with small and medium enterprise. And the definition for that is any company that is from sole proprietorship up to a company that employs uh, 499 people or less. So we very well may be doing business with your company. Um, <clears throat> Now, if we can go to the next slide, please. So here's another myth uh, that we hear a lot is that the government doesn't buy my, what I have to sell. So whether that's goods or services. Um, and I, I like to reframe this myth in, in terms of there really isn't anything that the government of Canada doesn't buy. So we very much, will uh, most likely have an opportunity for your business. So um, some services up there, catering services, snow removal, dogs and dog grooming. That was a new one for me. Um, there's just so many more like uh, veterinarian services, health services, all types of consultant work, project management work, um, learning services, just uh, you name it. Uh, there's been a contract uh, out there for that good or that service. Um, next slide, please. 
So this government procurement is centralized. So that is a myth. Um, so centralized people tend to think it's Ottawa or Gatineau. That's where all the buying is. And that's not the case. There are Government of Canada offices from coast to coast to coast. You could be in Iqaluit, Victoria, um, Halifax, um, and in Newfoundland, as Saint, um, in St. John's, Newfoundland, and everywhere of the major cities in between, we've got offices there. And when I say we, that's Public Services and Procurement Canada. Um, as well, my branch, Procurement Assistance Canada, we also have regional offices. So in every province, there is an office uh, for Procurement Assistance Canada, where you could be reaching out to people like myself, Carter and Alexander, and having conversations about how you can make your way through that uh, department. For that process as well. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so this slide here, um, it's it's doing its best to kind of simplify uh, the beginning stages of that process for for doing business with the uh, the government. I'm going to simplify that even further. Uh, the important thing here is that should you uh, get into the process of selling to the government and you are awarded a contract, you will need a procurement business number to get paid. You don't need that number to bid. You don't need that number to sell. You just need that number for us to be able to issue uh, a payment uh, to you. There's a few steps in getting that procurement business number, but that number itself is based on your, your GST number. So. And it does take about 20 to 30 minutes to get through the various web pages. Um, we have a different uh, presentation which goes into it in a little more detail. And of course, if there's time and, and you really want to know, we can uh, kind of walk you through that a little bit in the, the Q&A. Uh, but the main thing is there, PBN, you'll hear about that's the number you need to get paid. Um, next slide, please. Now, this slide here, we, we talk about methods of supply. Um, so that means, it can mean a couple, a few different things. So it could be what type of contractual arrangement um, that buying process is going to go through. And it's also around uh, for the different commodities, what system will you be accessing to get those opportunities? That's probably the, the simplest way um, I can describe that. Uh, so in terms of um, today, it being services, one of the systems we'd be interested in, in learning more about is pro services and pro services is a kind of portal, I guess, where we do a quarterly intake um, of interested suppliers. Um, it is similar to a request for proposal process in the sense of you would be supplying information to Canada to become qualified. Uh, and once you're qualified, um, your name is put into a database and at any time throughout the year, individual buyers are going into that database to find people to fulfill uh, a certain need. Um, so there, at that point, there would be a secondary process where you would be bidding on the work that they are, are trying to get. So pro services, it's about getting pre-qualified so that your business is ready um, to be selected for um, a short form uh, RFP process later on. Um, positive ones for that is, again, it's the non-centralized approach. It's buyers anywhere from across the country that are accessing that. Um, and you're going into the low dollar value procurement area, which would be uh, under $40,000 uh, for services. So again, it would be a shorter time frame a little bit easier to get through that process. And as it says on the slide there, it's uh, IT and non-IT professionals. Um, so consultants, project managers, that uh, sort of thing. Um, TBIBs, that's specific around IT services. So it could be project managing for IT, could be software developers, web designers, that kind of thing. Um, Temp help services. So that one is 
all on its own. Um, and there's a what they call a standing offer uh, agreement for that. So there's um, pre qualifications for that as well. And then the Directory of Linguistic Service Providers. So that's around that translation and interpretation um, and the technologies around that. So that's it, its own separate thing. And if we can go to the, the next slide. Ah, the magic words, low dollar value procurement. So um, I've alluded to this a number of times, and this, this is actually the point that I kind of want to press home today, um, is that the majority of, of contracts, um, so meaning the highest volume or highest number, is in this low dollar value category. Um, so today we're talking about services. So that's a $40,000 contract or uh, less. And what is significant about this is that non-competitive approaches can be used. So that means we didn't post it on uh, as a public tender. Um, so what it means is that the individual buyer is accessing a predetermined list or accessing a list that they've created based on businesses that they are aware of. And that's that niche kind of opportunity and where you want to be looking at getting yourself known, building those relationships within government so that, you know, your name comes up when it's time to do a, uh, a non-competitive approach or when it's time to do a source list based approach. Um, and source list to explain just means it is a competitive tender, but it was not placed on buy and sell. It was just a, it was based on a, a list created. Um, so like pro services, the, the system that I talked about, they would do a source list tender based on names that they gathered from the pre-qualified suppliers within that pro services uh, database. Now, another that last bullet point there where they talk about suppliers may be identified through networks. So sometimes that's as simple as is going to Google and Googling uh, a local supplier um, and going from that point as well. So it's really important um, to start thinking about, you know, what is your web presence? What kind of networking have you been doing? Do the buyers know uh, who you are and what services you offer? Uh, next slide, please. So this is uh, buyandsell.gc.ca. Um, this is our tenders uh, website. It's essentially the, the authoritative uh, source to find um, contracting opportunities within the federal government. Um, it is a huge website with all kinds of different sections, uh, but what we've got there slash tenders, that's where you would go to see what tenders are open right now, what tenders were done in the past. Um, this is also referenced as open data. Um, so it's all available there to, you can do your research to figure out what are we buying, when do we buy it, how much of it we're spending, um, and then you can go in there and take a look at what's currently active. If you are considering, you know, if you are bid ready, go in there now and take a look and see if there's anything out there for you. The other thing is that there's many different ways to kind of navigate through that website to make that search um, as productive as possible um and as efficient as possible so there's a, an opportunity you know today to maybe take a, a look at that as well um if we could go to the next slide please so benefits i talked a little bit about that before but um access is free that's the number one you do not need to register to access any of the features um, in buyandsell.gc.ca. There are some things you can do in there that would look like you're registering. And SRI is pretty much the only thing that would be officially a, a registration, but you do not need to sign in to, to 
to go in there um, and look around. Um, the last bullet point there, it says subscribe to a web feed. It's actually an email notification. Um, it's not actually a, a web feed. So I just wanted to clarify that. But again, that's one of the things you can do to kind of optimize the efficiency and productivity of how you use um, buy and sell.gc.ca. And uh, we can demonstrate that uh, later on if there's interest. Um, and Next slide, please. Okay, so this uh, slides, this is a program um, from the Department of Defense uh, that we like to talk about um, in these sessions. And really it's because it's, it's a program that's around innovation. Um, and it's really noteworthy about how, how productive uh, this program has been. Um, if you're participating in that program, there's many benefits. So one is from accessing world-class subject matter experts to accessing uh, funding opportunities. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. So this is a, a great slide that kind of, you know, gives a, a visual about the different uh, pillars within that program or pillars or, or opportunities. So again, around $80 million annually in funding, um, develop, test or build. Uh, that's the exciting part. So you don't need to be market ready to enter the program, but you are market ready when you exit. So that's a very unique uh, approach here. Um, so there's funding available for competitive projects, innovation networks. So that's getting you into the collaboration with those experts and experienced people. Um, there's contests where you're competing against peers. Um, sandboxes, that's an interesting one where you're, your product, it, maybe you're in the beta testing stage, you can have that opportunity where you're demonstrating your project to the people that uh, are the experts and that can eventually uh, buy it. And test drive is uh, pretty self-explanatory there where you have that product or that service, they will uh, issue contracts and use it for a while and potentially a longer term relationship coming out of that. And if we can go to the next slide, please. And this slide here, again, more information on how to access that. There is a, um, a newsletter that comes out. Um, so you can sign up for that newsletter and just get the news as it happens. And of course, there's Twitter uh, and LinkedIn for other opportunities. Um, now, I don't have a slide for these ones, but there are a few other newer opportunities that have come out um, within the last few months. Uh, one is a program called Scale Up. Um, and that program is done through um, Shared Services Canada and a partner organization called Tech Nation. And that's a program for anyone who's in kind of IT-based services or software uh, development where they are testing out a shortened tender period where you can go from award like tender to award within two to three weeks. So that's a, the innovative product there and contracts are up to around $236,000, I believe. So that's where the, the opportunities are there. So please have a look um, on the web for that. Uh, you can find some information on the buy and sell and you can also uh, find information on the Tech Nation website. Um, for Women's uh, Enterprise Fund, there were some recent announcements from the minister there. So uh, new funding for supporting women's enterprises. Uh, there's also the Black Enterprise Initiative. Um, and again, we'd be willing to uh, speak about those opportunities as well. If we can go to the, the next slide. And this slide here, this is our, um, our offering of different seminars that we do on a 
year over year. So every month, um, you're going to find at least one, uh, maybe two of these seminars that are being offered. You can register for those directly on the buyandsell.gc.ca website. Um, each of these uh, covers off uh, specific things that you need to know uh, going forward. So doing business with the government of Canada, that is a half hour uh, webinar. So covers off more uh, than what I've shared with you today. Finding opportunities digs into details on navigating through uh, buy and sell.gc.ca slash tenders and looking things up. Bidding on opportunities, again, goes into those next stages of, okay, I found an opportunity. What do I need to be aware of as I'm preparing my proposal or bid? Um, there's a longer uh, seminar on defense and security procurement. There's a lot of different rules uh, in that type of procurement. So you're, you're coming up on, on different things to be aware of um, as you're preparing proposals for that. Supplying professional services to the government of Canada. So again, that um, goes into the pro services um, website in detail. So you'll get a lot more information on how to get through that process. And the last one there, obtaining security clearance. So that can be a challenging process, but our the security clearance um, office has done a lot of work recently to change their processes and make them a little easier. So that would be uh, a useful seminar for attending. And next slide, please. And as I mentioned before, offices are all across the country. Um, so this, these are the offices for Procurement Assistance Canada. We've got a national telephone line where you can call and speak to someone. Uh, we've got our own website there that has different information that you can access at your leisure, uh, going over some of the things that we've talked about today. Um, the office that uh, myself, Alexander and Carter are located in is in Vancouver, uh, BC. Um, we do have a regional email and telephone number. So um, Alexander, whenever you want to, you can drop that into the chat. Um, and again, we've got, I think we're at about 10 people now who are <laughs> available to uh, answer questions or have uh, individual appointments uh, with any of you. So that's our business. Our business is to, to support you so please uh, use those numbers and those emails and, and reach out to us and we can see what we can do to help you through the process. And next slide, please. Or is that our last slide? Okay, well, that, that's oh. it. Or we got one more? Nope, just wanted to confirm with you, Carolyn, that, that this, this is the last slide. Uh, okay. And I can stop sharing now if you'd like. Okay, perfect. So yeah, so that again was just to give you an overview of some of the stuff that's involved in uh, buying and selling uh, with the government. There's a lot more and there's a lot more to know and a lot more to discuss. And that's why we're here today. So please, if there are any questions, bring them forward and, and we'll see what we can get through today. Thank you. That's great, Carolyn. Thanks so much for that presentation. Um, looking at the chat to see if there's any questions. Now is your opportunity to ask the experts uh, your questions. They have time for you right now. So let's take advantage of that opportunity. Hi there. Hello. Hello. Um, uh, thank you. I uh, it, am in the janitorial business. It's been, um, uh, please uh, bear with me, everyone, I guess, everyone listening. If I come across as being uh, a negative or rude <laughs> at times, I have been trying for the last four or five years um, to access the janitorial aspect. Um, you know, getting support from your office. I have attended quite a few of these 
sessions with different presenters. And I asked a few questions via email that uh, what percentage, if you have any research or data, what percentage of women have janitorial contracts from GovBC? And specifically, our uh, First Nations uh, uh, friends, uh, women that I have spoken to. And um, I had web, uh, sorry, Zoom meeting one day with someone from your office. And uh, she was going to give me some, um, some information and I didn't uh, get any. And I also have noticed based on my research that a lot of these contracts are um, literally given to large companies. And these are established companies. I think BGIS or Merck's or a few of those names come to my mind right now. However, in the janitorial um, area, I believe that maybe 99 point something percent of the work is done by women uh, the bottom at the very bottom the cleaning uh, aspect however they are given subcontracts um, to companies so my point I guess uh, uh, Caroline is that women and many immigrant women are not really paid the fair share of their work and I, that this was my, I come from academic field. My purpose was to start this company for many reasons, it was the social enterprise and to support women. And when I have tried to, uh, as I said, go through this process, I actually went to your office in Vancouver a couple of times too. Uh, when I was just beginning, I thought, okay, can someone help me navigate and simplify the process? It hasn't happened. And I think I threw quite a few questions at you. In the beginning, you had uh, given this, um, the, the pie graph, the four sections, and one was the barriers. And I know one presenter had said, oh yes, we have a, this uh, committee quote unquote about the barriers for women. So I'm wondering, if you can comment or elaborate, um, I have a lot of other questions too, but I shall pause. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to express my concerns. Well, thank you, Suki. Uh, so that was, there's actually quite a few questions um, with that I kind of gleaned um, from, from what you have said there. So, so one is, is, barriers i'm going to go backwards so that the, we do in procurement assistance canada have a, a branch that does look at um, barriers and barrier reduction um, so they that is a centrally located um, branch um, so there is work being done however it being government it's a big machine um, they I, I, can, I don't know exactly which ones they're working on this year or last year, um, but we can definitely uh, take, a, take a look into that and see. Um, in terms of having data on the percentage of women-owned businesses that have been awarded janitorial contracts specifically, I do not have that, but that's actually a per, uh, something that you can dig into by using the open data. Uh, that is on the buy and sell. Um, so I'm not sure if anyone uh, that you've met with before has gone into that, that aspect of it with you, uh, but you are definitely um, able to go in there and, and do some searching and look up the companies and see. Um, and the, the other thing is the janitorial, um, those are done by RFP. Um, and that's usually around the dollar value of the contracts there. The buyers are looking for, you know, we've got a number of buildings that we want to contract tract out that cleaning for. So they go to, on to buy and sell. Um, definitely if there's something current there that you're looking into and you have questions about any of the specifics that are on that one, 
uh, we can definitely, as I say, have another appointment uh, and talk through that. Um, and I would say as well, if for any of the previous uh, tenders that you bid on and were not successful, um, we, what kind of feedback were you given or were you provided with feedback on your proposals at that time? That would be a good place to, to start to, to see how you can do better for the next one. All right, and Carolyn, we have a number of questions in the chat. Um, Carter, did you want to facilitate those or did you want me to take those and, and give them to Carolyn? Um, here, I can pose some of the questions. I think Alexander, though, is actually doing a great job of fielding uh, most of them within the chat. Um, but here, I'll just pick out a few of them. Uh, we had a question uh, from Pauline asking, uh, saying that they can't find much work about uh, graphic design on the buy and sell and was wondering about um, if she sh if they should be looking in pro services. Um, just wondered if you could touch on that, maybe speak about pro services just briefly, Carolyn. Um, and yeah, go from there. Great. Um, so yes, graphic design, you would want to look into pro services. Absolutely. Um, Carter, I don't know, are you able to kind of share your screen and show the pro services tender page? Uh, absolutely. One second here. I'll just get, get Yeah, well, while that's coming up, I can um, just talk about that. So the, the pro services, there are a, a number of different streams is what they call it. So they're essentially breaking down the di um, different services into uh, like groups uh, based on the, the type of work or commodity that it is. Um, so as for a graphic artist, you would find the stream um, that that um, graphics are a part of. I know that I some it is included in the web design stuff. Um, I'm not sure if it's a separate stream uh, for print stuff, but you would want to go in there um, and you know, get your materials together. Um, there, it's there's a quarterly intake process on that. There's the page that I was looking for here. So it's this page. This is the where you get started page, and you will want to take your time and and read through that. And I know I think one of the barriers that we have in terms of government is there's too many words, <laughs> and I, I apologize for that in advance. But at this point, we. Uh, we can't get away from it. So, um, so from here, uh, there is a link for the actual RFP, which takes you to another uh, long document. And you'll want to go through that, see the stream, and then see what type of qualifications they're looking for. Uh, on this, they do have a number of years experience, I believe, that's required on most of them. Um, so once you've read through it, get all your documents together, and I, I believe it, it'll take a bit of time to actually submit all that on the website. Uh, and then it's being aware of, you know, when's the next cutoff date uh, for submitting. And then once that cutoff date is probably around two to three months before they've gone through all of the evaluation and then announcing letting you know if you're on the, the supplier list. So that's, that's gonna be your main way to get your services uh, known in the federal government. Now, another way is for the, um, those small uh, under 5,000 or under uh, $10,000 jobs. And those would be through your network. So it's trying to get to know um, the people in government who are authorized, um, maybe people who are running projects or running units um, or the individual buyers uh, in other government departments. So within the federal government, there's PSP, Public Services and Procurement Canada, we are the authorized buyer for all of government. So uh, PSPC is contracting for the larger dollar value stuff. Plus we have the people who are buying stuff for 
uh, PSPC use only. Every other government department agency, Crown Corp, has their team of people who's buying stuff for their use uh, under that $40,000 threshold. So the networking is about who are those people. I want to get them to know who I am so they will think about me the next time they do a source list tender or if they're just looking to uh, you know, get three quotes and buy something on a credit card. Um, so we have a, a system called GEDS, uh, which is the Government Electronic Directory Service. And that's just up on the screen right now. So this is like the phone book for all the government departments. Um, you're going to find most of them there. You will not find the, those that are in the paramilitary or military. So Department of Defense, they're not published. Um, RCMP are not published. Um, and CBSA, I believe only a few, you might find a few names or any, but all the other Department of Fisheries, um, Climate, econo Economic, sorry, client, Climate and Environmental Change Canada, they're going to be there, uh, Indi Indigenous Services Canada, uh, Wage, which is women uh, and gender equality, they're all going to be there. Um, so you can search by department, you can search by name. Um, so maybe do a search by my name, uh, Carter, if you want to see what comes up. This will be our test of how up to date it is. Because I, uh, I moved departments in the summer, or moved branches, I should say, in the summer. And there I am. And that's got my current information there. So that's one way to do it. Um, you'll see where it says organizations underneath. So that lists down to Public Services and Procurement Canada. Um, so if we go to Pacific Region, actually, we might be able to find. And to, to let you know in advance, what I'm thinking is we have a department that's called Material Management. Uh, or corporate services. And within that branch, there are the people that will buy, um, you know, think items under $5,000. So uh, you might want to focus on that person or their manager um, and potentially, yeah, so if you, sorry, Carter, corporate services, strategic management, that's what, we, what we're looking for. Second from the top. corporate operations. Great, so then we've got, um, sorry, I don't have my glasses on here. Accommodation and material management. So this is a good uh, demonstration of, hmm, what exactly am I looking for? <laughs> There is some work there. So I, when I'm looking at this, I would try to see like, who's the manager? Who's the chief? Um, so yeah, so Peter Eisenbach, regional chief. So that means he's, he's at a manager level. He would be telling people what to do or what to buy. So that might be a good name to reach out for. You'll also see a supply officer. That's another government term for uh, the buyer. So though you could reach out to them and see, get to know them and, and offer your, your services to them and, and see what kind of information they would provide. So again, supply officer, procurement officer, manager, chief, uh, team lead. Those are the kind of... Um, roles of people who have kind of the the delegation authority which is the the approval to spend the money or they have that authority within the organization that they're planning projects or planning the budget those are the people you want to get to know thank you so much carolyn that was really helpful and i actually found this um directory before i just wasn't sure if they are bound to be in a process or yeah as you just said um 
under five thousand dollars, it's more informal, right? Correct. Yeah, the okay. under five thousand dollars is for some. It's it's around they they need to get three quotes for that item or that service. That's mm -hmm. as as simple as it could be. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. That was really helpful. You're welcome. I guess we can get another question in there, Carter. For sure here, I'll just go through the list again. Alexander is doing a fantastic job providing links and explaining things thoroughly. Uh, we did have a question though about uh, how does one get in touch with small dollar value uh, contracts from the local government offices? Okay, so I'm thinking that that um, might be kind of what we just talked about. Um, so it, this, when you say local government offices, I would suggest like looking up another government branch. So let's try Department of Fisheries and Oceans. That's a that's a really big example to start. So so again, that's a really large department. So there could be more than more than one opp opportunity. Give me. Maybe try DFO, see if that. But let's go by acronym, no. We can search by department though. I think because it uses the old name, maybe just do type in ocean. And then if that doesn't work, type in fisheries. If not, just do the uh, uh, listing and find it. It's probably under its old name. There it is. Looks like you wanted the Canada to be a part of it, but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so this is, again, it's a huge department. So there's got to be another level that's not just people. Um, Just pick pick on if you can find somebody there that's like in asset management or or even like project manager. Let's click on that. So this is my what one of my tricks when I'm on here is I'll just pick a person which will give me kind of that link tree for where they are in the department or it should <laughs> um, and then I kind of go backwards from there but it looks like fisheries is organized a little bit differently so where this is kind of where you want to follow the breadcrumbs essentially and if you're looking at a department that will give you the various branches, again, start with the manager or start with the director uh, and see what kind of information you can get from them as to how their department is structured. They might give you a name of some right away. I will here, call this person um, and you can go, go through it that way. You know, and in terms of barrier busting, it's like, who, who should I be talking to? It's it's a lot of work to get through, but I think the work is worth it. Um, and knowing again, those, what level, director, manager, chief, team leader, and what type of uh, job title 
would have the authority. So you're looking at um, project managers, supply officers, procurement officers, asset managers. Um, those are people that would be doing the buying or are connected to the people that are doing the buying. I just wanted to add on too, uh, when it comes to low dollar value, it is a different way of going about it than the competitive procurement where you're, you know, you're putting in that bid and waiting that tendering period. Uh, with low dollar value, it's, it's more about the research you're doing beforehand. So for example, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you um, my own personal story about uh, low dollar value. So um, folks know that we, we host events and when we were doing it in person, we would post it on Eventbrite. And we would get emails about folks who are able to supplement that event, whether it be graphic design or security, uh, who saw us post on Eventbrite and were curious if we wanted to procure some services from the low dollar value threshold. Uh, so there's a lot of ways that you can go about this, um, but for low dollar value, you're going to want to do that research beforehand kind of understand a little bit about what that department buys for low dollar value. A good website, and I see Carter has the tab, I believe, is Proactive Disclosure. And using Proactive Disclosure to look at some of those receipts. So yeah, contracts over 10,000. And from there, you'll see that there's gonna be um, some uh, 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 low dollar value contracts. Uh, so typically below 25,000 or over 10,000 uh, would be recorded on this website and that can help provide you some business information. So uh, Carter, why don't you on the search engine, let's just type in something like, uh, let's do waste, uh, for example. So you know you're in the waste field, you know that you don't see any uh, uh, tenders at the moment uh, for uh, competitive uh, procurement, but you're wanting to know who buys what from who and how much. So you can use the website Proactive Disclosure to search for those contracts over 10,000 and get some information. Uh, so for example, here on that first link, uh, even though it was in 2009, we see that the value was around $11,000 and the organization, which is key, is Employment and Social Development Canada. So a couple of things you can do from Proactive Disclosure. One, you can say, hey, I, I see that you had a contract, um, let's just say 2009 for some waste disposal. Uh, I'm curious if you need that, those type of services in the future. Um, so we're, we're not consultants, we're not gonna tell you exactly what to say, uh, but that's kind of the idea here is that you can use uh, some of the different free websites to build yourself enough business intelligence to go then actively market to different client groups or uh, uh, departments using GETS. That's excellent. Thank you for, for sharing that, Alexander. So it, it's really is market intelligence and doing that work to, to build up, you know, build up your pitch and your elevator speech when you're, you're reaching out to people to, to make yourself known. I just want to but jump in and say thank you, Alexander. You're the great one. <laughs> because this is something like this I was looking for. So this is this is great. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to help. And if you if you do want some more information on that too, you're welcome to reach out to our, our region. Yeah, uh, no, we'll, we'll... This is exactly what I was hoping one day. And this is great. Thank you. No worries. Wonderful. Well, we are approaching 11 o'clock, so I'm going to close us out um, and share my slides. And um, I think, you know, this has been a really interactive session. So I really appreciate um, all the questions, the interaction, and really um, when, when you get involved as a, a participant, you're answering and asking questions that other people have as well. So thank you for those contributions. Um, our panelists, uh, you've done a great job uh, answering questions, and I know this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to learn. So in the follow-up email, we're going to provide some really clear next steps for our participants and our clients to connect with you directly. And if you are in the business of selling goods, we have another session coming up on March first, which will be specifically about how to do business with the government of Canada if you are providing goods. So uh, you can see this link on the screen to uh, learn more about that session. 
Uh, you can see some other upcoming programs that we have um, anywhere from learning about our loans programs to a supplier diversity. So lots of training opportunities and uh, these sessions are all available on our website. So um, I would like to turn your direction and attention to the chat. Um, my colleague Netta is going to post a uh, feedback poll. It's really important that we get your feedback. Uh, we want to always improve these sessions. So please take a moment and complete that. In the follow-up feedback survey, those who complete the survey will be entered into a draw to win a $50 Visa gift card. So um, I see that is open. Thank you so much. I encourage everyone to subscribe to our e-newsletter at webc.ca to stay informed about our services and, and make sure you stay connected with this amazing community of women entrepreneurs from around BC. So on behalf of the team at WeBC and Procurement Assistance Canada, thank you everyone for your attention, your engagement. I see all the thank yous on the chat. It's really been a great session. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day.